Now, a report into grooming gangs in Rochdale has been published today, stating that young girls were left at the mercy of paedophile grooming gangs because of failings by senior police and council bosses. Well, join me now is GB News' reporter Charlie Peters. Charlie, a damning report, long overdue, and contains some extremely disturbing details. What's the latest? That's right, and I think the top of those disturbing findings is that the team has identified some 96 men that it believes still pose a risk to children and that many of them have not been prosecuted. There are also many findings within the report that disruption activities and strategies by the police and the local council to disrupt the child sexual exploitation gangs were deplorable in their failures and that also there were findings of widespread sexual abuse within Greater Manchester and Rochdale in particular from 2004. But this report, while continuing a long theme of exposing cover-ups and failures by police, is rather different from many of the other reviews we've seen into town, such as Rotherham and, of course, Telford, insofar as it doesn't actually list political correctness or a nervousness around race as one of the reasons why the police or social services failed to act. There is only one mention in the 173 pages about a nervousness around ethnicity. It said that one senior investigating officer was concerned that a strategy to target taxi drivers who have Pakistani heritage would be seen as being tarred with the racial brush. And so the team was nervous around doing that and didn't go forward with that disrupting activity. I spoke to Gary Ridgway, one of the report's co-authors, about the inclusion of that testimony and why a wider coverage of the ethnicity issue wasn't in the report. When you look at what the quote was from that senior investigating officer, there's some, there would be some challenge anyway to what he was suggesting because you're talking about um, racial profiling. You're saying, well, we're going to stop Asian, every Asian taxi driver. Um, so I would imagine if that was a genuine suggestion, there might be some, well, hang on, we, we might say, well, we need to stop taxi drivers where there's children, unaccompanied children in the, in the taxi. That's completely different to saying we're stopping every Asian taxi driver. So although his, his point was well made, and the point we make in our report is that there's lots of ways to disrupt these people. There's lots of ways to disrupt ta taxis, take takeaways. You can challenge them. There's, there's a whole host of tactics police and local authorities can use if you believe an individual is committing serious crime. And obviously, raping children is the most one of the most serious crimes we can talk about. Well, that response from Gary Ridgway was part of a wider discussion taking place today. We also sat down with Maggie Oliver to discuss her response to this report, some seven years in the making since it was launched in 2017. She was grateful for the work that had been done, but expressed concern after Andy Burnham and the wider report team said that many of the people they approached refused to engage with the inquiry and often sent back written reports that didn't engage with the questions being posed. Here's what Maggie had to say. I am grateful. I'm grateful to Andy Burnham for ordering these reviews. Um, I am really grateful to Gary and Malcolm for standing their ground because they have met obstacles at every stage of this journey. What this report doesn't really cover is the battle it's been to get this truth out there. The lies, the cover-ups, the gaslighting, all those things are forgotten in a report like this. Well, all of those things being forgotten, perhaps by the report, but not by the survivors and indeed the whistleblowers, such as Maggie and Sarah Rowbotham, the member of the crisis intervention team, who today said that she was vindicated by the findings. And also, towards those who didn't contribute to the report, she said, shame on you. This review team will now enter its fourth and final stage by looking at contemporary failings within child sexual exploitation in Manchester. Maggie Oliver and many other survivors have alleged today that the failings that have been discovered in this report are still ongoing. Charlie Peters, thank you for that update.
It's an astonishing situation um, that we find ourselves in here. Um, look at the post office scandal. The grooming scandal predated that. Maggie Oliver, um, an absolute living legend to have fought on tirelessly campaigning for survivors, victims. Some of the detail coming out of this report today is enough to make you weep. Um, the Greater Manchester Police took no action in the case of a 15-year-old girl who gave birth to a child of her pimp. Um, when cases did eventually reach court, some of the victims continued to be harassed and intimidated by the men who had previously abused them, sometimes at gunpoint. And as for this idea that raising difficult questions around the Muslim men in this, because it was predominantly Muslim men, that's not racist, it's just the truth. When those questions were raised, the media, politicians, the council and the police, they turned a blind eye and they totally abandoned these poor, ostensibly white, working-class girls who were just abandoned and thrown to the wolves and let down in the most astonishing and shameful way. One child told Greater Manchester Peace that her abusers kept girls in cages and made them bark like a dog or dress like a baby, but took no action when she left Greater Manchester and was put in care elsewhere. <sighs> And Maggie Oliver there saying this still carries on to this day. Those of us who believe that this has gone away are, I think, helping this to continue. So this report is important. Thank you, Maggie Oliver, for fighting on and on and on and giving those poor girls a voice.